Hey, do you need wallpaper? Go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Give them my name, tell them Spencer Colgan sent you, and they'll be sure to give you 10% off at checkout. Check it out, tell them I said hello. They have a tremendous selection. Don't shop anywhere else until you've checked out www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Painters often remark on YouTube and elsewhere, if you need tape, you're not a real painter. Well, I can tell you that as a professional wallpaper hanger and painter, I use tape because it's an instrument with which I can render a more perfect product for my customer. The painters who say not to use tape are the run-of-the-mill painters, I hate to say it. What do I mean? They're the ones out there painting commercially every day. They're not in high-end residential uh, entities. They're basically painting by the hour, which is, it's not a knock, but it's an environment that does not demand the finest tools and the finest product that can be achieved by the professional painter. Something that they themselves are capable of rendering, but time doesn't permit, and it just happens to be that it's cost prohibitive to use things that slow the job down, like what I'm about to show you. This is a low-tack tape, and Customers don't want to see crooked lines. I saw a painter last year get on his hands and knees and working upside down, literally with his head against the floor, with his, with his eyes parallel to the floor in the opposite direction than that which you and I are capable of normally, what we normally do. His head was upside down and he was cutting the line here looking at it like this, upside down. Just use tape. So this is why I use this. Now I, I, I spool it off of a 3M hand masker, okay? And so it not only applies tape, but it also applies the paper underneath the tape. And this is why I do it. Can you achieve that with a brush? Yeah. And it's gonna take you double the time. Or you're not gonna get this sharp of a line and you're just going to say, the heck with it. Okay. So the question of the video is, I'm a new painter, should I use masking tape? And the answer is, yes, you should. You should. Don't listen to the veterans, the so-called veterans out there, who are grinding an axe. You know the phrase, they have an axe to grind? That's missing cock. Somebody cocked over grout. So you tell me, should you use tape? But the question is, should you use it? Yes. Not too bad. Okay.
Moral of the story is yes, you should use masking tape. So this is a new construction. So I put tape just to the right of the crack line, and that is the point at which the wall meets with the cabinet. It's a natural separation, but it was caulked. But now the caulk has given way, right? So all we're going to do when we're, we're painting a surface like this, we're going to apply clear caulk. You see, uh, the, a lot of folks don't have access to this product. The beauty of clear caulk is that I apply it and I paint it right away. And the color that one sees when he looks at this crack is the color of the paint. If I were to use white, well, the color that one is going to see when he or she looks at this corner, I shouldn't call it a crack because it's no longer going to be a crack, is going to be the white edge that is revealed when this tape comes up. You would agree that if I put white in here, then the very edge, the resting up against that tape, will necessarily be white. But if I use clear, the color is going to be the color of the paint, because this is transparent. And the illusion to the eye is going to be that instead of seeing clear, the color will reflect through the clear and give the hue of this color of paint. But if I use white, well now we have pigment. And you're going to see white. You're going to see this color, then you're going to see white, then you're going to see this color. In New York City, we call that ghetto. That is how you do it ghetto style. So we're going to do it clear. It's going to go on white, but it's clear. And we're going to put the thinnest bead possible. After I've done that, I paint it right away. This is probably one of the most significant sources of questioning that I get on my channel. Are you sure? Do I paint it while it's wet? Do I wait until it's dry? Right away. So that the finished result is what you're looking at. When that dries, it'll be perfect. And for those of you fanatics who notice that, don't worry. We got all kinds on my channel. Don't worry about that. Okay. And I paint one wall at a time. I do two coats and I move on to the next. I move my whole station over to the next wall. That's what I've learned after many years of trying to paint all the walls at the same time. Cut all of the walls, roll all of the walls. No, you can only be effective by doing it piecemeal. Here's why. When you cut the wall at the top near the ceiling, you don't want to be painting it 20, 30, 40 minutes later. You want to be painting it right away because 
when you cut it, it's wet up there. So you want to start rolling it and then rolling the wall. If I cut it here, and then here, and then here, I get a phone call, I text somebody, I can't stand you, then I do this. I come back, this is dry. My first four inches is dry. Then I start rolling, the average painter, he starts rolling, he doesn't care. What you have at the top and have at the bottom is two separate walls. That was painted a half an hour ago, this was painted an hour later. The result is a light color at the top, the halo effect. These are tips and tricks I share with you after I started out a 14-year-old painter in Brooklyn, New York, because my three brothers who shared the room with me at 453 Third Street, Brooklyn, New York, were too lazy to keep the room clean. And I said, when I get my own room, which I never had, we had eight kids, there was no room for your own room. I decided I was gonna go up to the hardware store, which is still there, Tarzian Hardware on 7th Avenue, get a gallon of paint. At the time it was 15 bucks for a gallon of good paint. And everybody used flat. None of this semi-gloss or eggshell. That's all new. I came home with rust-colored paint and I, I, I taught myself how to make it look right. Made a few mistakes, learned the professional way later on in life. But I go around cutting all the walls and little Spencer didn't realize he was creating a halo effect, but I was. It was lighter at the top, but we don't make those mistakes anymore. Now we fine tune it. We use caulk, we use tape, we use the best roller. You're looking at a half inch purdy, nine inch wide ultra. Okay, it doesn't pay to go cheap. Go with the good stuff. Thanks for watching.